Hey there, beautiful people. So today um, I want to talk to you guys about uh, behavior change and how that happens. Um, so we we did a video last week or a couple of days ago, um, and it was all about the stages of change. So this one we're talking about how we can actually implement change. So um, there's a a, a doctor, um, psychiatrist, psychologist, one of those people um, that came up with this behavior change model. Um, BJ Fogg is his name, so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, so um, his model is B equals um, MAT. So your B, so your B is your behavior, and every behavior that ever happens needs these three different things to come together in order for it to actually happen. So. M is your motivation, A is your actual um, ability to do the behavior, and then T is your trigger, or your trigger can be um, a prompt, or your call to action. Okay, so um, you can look at it like this, so a little visual for you. Okay, so here's your, we're gonna do a little access type thing. So here's your motivation, and then you have um, different levels of motivation here. So you have your high and then your low. So here's your high, and then your low. Okay, so some people will be highly motivated to do something, some people not so much. Um, and then down here is our ability level. Are you able to do the thing? So. On this side, is it easy to do? And then, then on the inside is gonna be, is it difficult to do or is it hard? And don't worry about the hieroglyphics, we'll explain that later. So say, for example, something as simple as, um, say, making a donation to, um, the, an animal shelter. Some people will be highly motivated to do that. Now, if you're highly motivated, you're up here, you're highly motivated, but you're only donating $10 here, it's easy to do, you're highly motivated, then the behavior is gonna happen. Now, if you're highly motivated, but somebody wants you to donate $10,000, then you're gonna fall in here. So I'm gonna show you kind of the difference between the two and how behavior will actually change. So we have this line here and anything on this side of the line is basically gonna be a behavior that will change. So say you're highly motivated and it's easy to do, then the behavior changes. But if you're highly motivated and it's hard to do, it's gonna be less likely that it's gonna happen. So that's basically the idea of how motivation works. Now the issue with motivation is it changes. I could motivate you by putting a gun to your head, but is that something that's gonna help you do it consistently on a daily basis? Probably not. So if all three of these things aren't working together, then the behavior won't change. You can manipulate any one of these three in order to make sure that the behavior changes, but the biggest thing for me is always gonna be the trigger. So how can we change the trigger in order to fit the behavior? So if we can make it easy to do, then the motivation will be there because it's easier and we have to also, or like I said, we have the trigger, that trigger has to be um, something that's pretty simple. So for example, you wanna go running every day. What trigger can you set on, over the course of your day to make sure that you go running? All right, well, I don't have time in the evening because I just got home work and then I have to take the kids here and then I gotta do this and I gotta do that. Okay, where, what's gonna make it easiest for you? First thing in the morning, okay. I'm gonna set my shoes right next to my bed. 
I'm gonna set my tennis shoes right next to my bed. And that's gonna remind me, that's gonna trigger me or prompt me, give me a call to action to actually go run. So it's something as simple as that. Now, you can also take, if you wanna change the behavior, um, you can take away a, a trigger. So we have a trigger that will kind of remind us to do something, then we can take away something in order to basically not give us the behavior that we're looking to, to eradicate. For example, I don't want to eat sweets. A lot of people will buy sweets and have them in their house. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So if you remove the trigger, you take the sweets out of your house, then you don't eat sweets. It's amazing how that works out. So you, the trigger is the biggest part. If you can make the trigger easy, then your ability to actually do the behavior and your motivation levels will increase. And that way, you will be a happy person because the behavior starts to change. You will start to build self-confidence and the, the habit or the behavior starts to become a habit. So that's it. That's the fog, the fog model. Um, I hope that wasn't too complicated. And uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to shoot us a message and um, we'll, we'll get that answered. Talk to you next time.